Hello everybody, welcome to Web Applications for Everybody. Today we're going to show how to install MAMP uh, for Windows. So I'm going to download it here and I'm on Windows so it put, takes me straight to the download. I'm just going to say I'll go ahead and run. So now it's going to go ahead and run the application. I must say yes. English. Next. I'm not going to install MAMP Pro. That's nice that they give us that checkbox. So you can pay for MAMP Pro. I don't exactly know. I've never used it, so I don't know. Accept the license agreement. Put it in MAMP. Next. Next, desktop icon. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so now we're going to continue. And we have MAMP. We should also have this on our desktop. So it's coming up. So this is very important. You've got to allow this to happen because if you don't, um, well, let's check them both uh, so that MySQL can talk. Now this is HTTPT and I'm gonna say yes to both of those. And that's very, very important. And now that they're up, and so we can open the start page. And there we go. And you can take a look at PHP info. Um, and then you can look at PHP my admin. And literally at this point, if you've got something coming up here in, in PHP my admin, um, you have successfully installed uh, MAMP. So congratulations. <music> Hello and welcome to Web Applications for Everybody. Now we're going to install Atom, the text editor. Uh, you literally could uh, do any text editor. Uh, I use Atom because I like it. It uh, works on Windows, Mac, and Linux the same way. But literally you can use any uh, text editor that you like. Don't use Notepad or Word. Certainly don't use Word. Um, because if you use Word, it'll mess your files up. Okay. We real, really need a text editor with syntax highlighting and things like that. So it's uh, finished downloading and it's getting ready to install it. write right now our first PHP application so I'm going to go ahead and get Adam started and I'm going to get MAMP started so MAMP I'm going to have to start these servers I'm going to start the Apache server and our database server MySQL so we'll get that started So let's open the start page because there's a lot of good information we can get here. We can find out about our PHP configuration. And my favorite thing to do is to run PHP MyAdmin because literally if PHP MyAdmin is running and you come up with something that looks like this, you are in really good shape. Everything is running fine. Your database server is running and, and, and PHP is running. So I'll get rid of this. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to write our first application. And so I'll have Adam here. And... Um, so I'm going to do file, new file. And I'm going to call this um, h1 hello from a web page slash h1. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. File, save. And I'm going to go to a file called backslash C MAMP HT Docs. I've pinned it here to make my job a little easier. I found it once, drug it over here and pinned it. So I can get right here. Now, this is the web document root for your web server. And you can make folders here. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this folder first. Make that folder. And I'm going to save this file call it as index.php. Index.php is a special name. It's a file that if you navigate a web browser to the directory, it will generally serve index.php. And now it's syntax highlight, highlighted this for us because it, it's showing this. Now, the way it works is I can go anywhere from localhost on down to the folder that I just made, to the file I just made, index.php. And so you see that c colon backslash map htdocs is the top of a folder, web folder structure that's sort of from localhost on down, okay? And so this is just an HTML page. We've seen it, you know, we can view source. This HTML page came from uh, PHP. Now, so far we haven't actually run any code in this PHP. So let's go ahead and write some code. So, and show you how PHP can run code. So there's a tag called less than question mark PHP, and then a tag that's question mark less than, and it's already added that for me. And I can run code in here. So I can say something like echo, hi there, backslash n, semicolon. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to run this code. Run it again. And so there we go. It says hi there. Let me put a space in here. So this is code, and basically what happens, now let me put a paragraph tag in here. Put a paragraph tag, some HTML, put an end paragraph, something else. And so what happens in PHP is, when you drop into the PHP language on the server, it switches from just rendering this HTML to running code, but then in place of this, we get the string hi there. So let me save that and hit refresh again. And so this bit came from the executing code that ran here. And so inside this code, we can put in some logic. So we can say, you know, dollar $x equals six times seven to make a variable. And then we can say echo the answer is, now the double quote was already there, sorry. Slash end, put a new line in. So I'm gonna save that. And now I'm gonna hit refresh. So it looks like it didn't quite work. Um, oh, I got to concatenate this with a dot. Oh, no, this is supposed to be an X. That's why I made a mistake. File, save, refresh. Okay, so you see this came, hi there. All this stuff came from the executing code. So you can think of all this output as the result of executing this code. And anything that is printed out during this code is uh, put out as the web page. And so that's kind of the idea. You put files and folders inside of this HT docs, and then you execute them by running them in a browser. Okay, so we have one last thing we've got to do, and it's a really, really, really important thing. Matter of fact, I make it an assignment. I think it's so important. So we just finished writing our first web application. Now let's go ahead and make a syntax in this error, in this application, 
make a syntax error, and we're going to make all kinds of mistakes. So I'm missing a semicolon there. So I come up here and I refresh it. And what happens here is we get an error. Now, I just put the error in so you kind of know what the error was. But the question is, what if this was like hundreds of lines of code and you had to figure out what's going on? Okay, so let's take a look. There is a setting. It turns out that printing errors on the screen is great for developers, but it's really bad for production systems. And so they default these systems when they install them to not turning on, not showing errors. So we have to find out how to change the errors. So we're going to go to that start page and then go to PHP info. And we are going to look at the loaded configuration. It's right here. C colon backslash MAMP config PHP 7.1.5. You got to remember this imperfectly. 7.1.5. Okay. So let's open that file. File, open file. We're going to go to MAMP. I'm going to keep going back and forth. Is it in configuration? No, I think it's in. Uh, I got to keep going back. Conf PHP 7.1.5. Okay. Conf PHP 715. This file right here is the file we're going to open. And here we are. Now you're going to search down for a field named display errors. So let's just scroll down here. Display errors. I'll find it. So it's turned off by default because of security. Let's not find that one. OK, so I think I found it. OK, display errors off. So we're going to change this to on. And might as well display startup errors to on, too. So there we go. So it's still going to log the errors. We'll talk later about where these logs are at. But now I am going to save this file. So I've changed that. And then I am going to stop the servers. You don't have to stop the servers very often. But in this case, we have to stop the servers because we changed the basic server configuration. So this will take a moment. So they're stopped. Now let's start them. So they're coming up, the Apache server's up. And the MySQL server's up. And now let's, we can just refresh this page. Okay, so we can go down and we can look at where the display errors are. Okay, display errors on. Startup errors on. That's what we want to see. Okay, now that we've got these, when we hit this, instead of giving us a very nondescript, kind of not very helpful, it's going to say, oh, parse error on line six, unexpected echo. So now I can go back to my code here, close that, and go like, oh, line six, it was not expecting echo. So let's put the semicolon back in and save it. Now we can hit refresh and it works. Okay? So make sure to fix these and do it early. You will waste hours and hours and hours if you are just getting those 500 errors uh, while you're writing your code. So please do this and do it early uh, just to keep your sanity so that uh, when you make mistakes, uh, that you get some feedback as to what went wrong.